and keep them acquainted with the latest information and trends. Today we have with us Dr. Chintan Varnagar sir, Vice Technical Activity Chair, IEEE SPS Chapter, Gujarat Section, whom I would like to welcome and request to enlighten us about IEEE SPS GS. Over to you, sir. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. You are not, not audible. Chintan, sir, your voice is not audible. Yes. Hello, I'm audible now. Yes, sir, you're audible now. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Hello. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will be uh, going through some activities that we typically carry out at SPS Gujarat chapter. I will be talking about the membership, the benefits, and the process to acquire these memberships. Uh, so the activities that we typically uh, carry out throughout the uh, year uh, is uh, can be listed uh, can be seen like this. Uh, we organize listing your lecture series, and uh, we invite uh, industry experts and uh, scientists and researchers from the globe who have contributed uh, excellently uh, in the domain of their research. We organize NetSip. Uh, new trends and signal processing. Uh, it is an flagship event that we uh, plan in collaboration with uh, DSC Gandhinagar. We uh, uh, deliver 
uh, various technical talks uh, in the area of uh, signal processing, machine learning, deep learning, and uh, wireless communication. Uh, the basic purpose of doing all this activity is to share the current research, current trend, and uh, best of the research that is going in the domain through uh, dissemination of the knowledge and uh, participants would get uh, idea, uh, knowledge, and uh, how they can uh, proceed further in their research domain. Uh, we uh, organize young professional activities, uh, those who are uh, in the early stage of their career uh, goals, they can enhance the career skills and boost their professional learning and networking through these activities. These are the some glimpses uh, that is uh, of this distinguished lecture series that we have conducted in the past. Uh, this is uh, an event, NETSIP, uh, which was uh, conducted at uh, physical mode in uh, post, sorry, pre pandemic uh, time. And last year, this event was handled, uh, conducted through a virtual medium. Uh, these are the some talks uh, that we have organized uh, in this technical talk series. We have invited uh, experts from uh, various international uh, and global aspects. These are the talks that we have organized. Uh, the, uh, these are the activities that we typically go and carry out in this uh, WISP, Women's and Signal Processing. Uh, we organize uh, some panel discussions where the experts and uh, pro professionals from uh, industry uh, come together on the same platform and they deliver uh, how research can be uh, implemented, inculcated, and used uh, in the budding uh, young professionals. Uh, so I will talk about SPS membership and its benefit. Uh, so there are uh, there is the fee of uh, $22 per year uh, for students and for the professional, the fee is uh, $39 per year. Uh, if a student is uh, there, uh, a student uh, may apply a code future 50 uh, to uh, make this uh, half the rate, so it is costing uh, approximately 1,000 rupees only. Uh, this uh, SPS membership benefit is given at dollar one cost. Uh, so the benefits that one get after this SPS membership is uh, they will get uh, monthly delivery of the signal processing newsletter, uh, SPS content gazette and the resource center uh, through which uh, one can learn and acquire the best current knowledge about the research and recent advancements in the field. Uh, the offers that uh, SPS gives to its member, uh, grant for the paper publication uh, for both students as well as professionals. Uh, we sponsor the paper publication uh, travel grant to measure uh, SPS conferences in the India. Uh, best paper award is given. Uh, discount is given in the registration fee at any event which is supported by the chapter. Uh, the members get a priority seats uh, allocation uh, and there is a PhD forum as well as uh, UG and PG dissertation competition. Uh, student programs as far as the uh, activities that is concerned with the student, uh, which includes uh, student career lunch on, uh, Signal Processing Cup. Uh, we are planning for the same in the month of August, wherein uh, student would be, uh, or the participants are invited for the video lectures. They are, they are supposed to submit three to four minutes or five minutes video uh, or animated uh, concept explaining the basics and requirement of uh, the challenge that they are facing and the implementation of the same. Uh, we organize conferences. Uh, these are the some flexible uh, conferences that we have organized in the past. 
And at the last, we organize the hackathons, uh, wherein the students and participants get an uh, conducive environment, wherein students can contribute uh, for uh, solving a problem of a society uh, as defined by the industry or by the eminent identified global players in the domain. Uh, these are the awards and recognition that we have received. The chapter has uh, uh, received uh, best uh, student chapter, sorry, best uh, SPS chapter award for the year of 2021. And the same award was given to, 2000, uh, to the chapter in 2015 and 16. Uh, we summarize all the activities that we have carried out uh, quarterly uh, under this uh, chapter. And we publish the newsletters. Uh, these are the glimpse of the newsletters that uh, is disseminated to all the uh, members of the SPS group. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, Eric Quedy, uh, if you can ask and you can reach us to this email ID for further details, you can refer to this website as well. Thank you very much, Chintan, sir, for briefing us about IEEE SPS GS, keeping the motto in view, an expert talk on augmented reality and virtual reality is organized by IEEE Signal Processing Society chapter, Gujarat section, in collaboration with IEEE Silver Oak University student branch under the technical series 2022. For the session, we have Harshit Lalpura, sir, the founder of Hash Media, who has more than 10 years of experience in augmented reality and virtual reality. This session will help you to know more about our AR and VR. I would like to request all the participants to post their queries in chat box. We will have a question answer session at the end with the expert. To our immense pleasure today, we are also accompanied by Dr. Arpan Desai, sir, Technical Activity Chair, IEEE SPSGS, whom I would request to welcome our prominent speaker, Mr. Harshit Lal. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we have um, Harshit Lalpura with us. Um, I'd probably like to say that Harshit Lalpura was my student at BVM Engineering College. So I'd like to um, give a brief about him. Um, Harshit um, is a founder of Hash Media that works on various projects on augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and interactive surfaces. His company has proudly served many Fortune 100 companies. Mr. Harshit finished his diploma from Nirmal University, Ahmedabad. He from BVM Engineering College, Anand. And then he worked as a research associate at IIT Delhi, where he was actively involved in the research field of augmented reality at Robotics Vision Lab. Harshit Lalpura has strong entrepreneurial qualities with wide experience in the field of AR, VR, MR, and interactive services. So it will be a great, great uh, platform to all of us um, for having an interaction with him. So whosoever is having any kind of doubts um, during the session, uh, please feel free to uh, give any kind of queries or raise the queries. And I'm pretty sure that he'll be more than happy to resolve the same. So without much ado, I'd like to invite um, Harshit Lalpura for his talk on augmented reality, virtual reality. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your kind words. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, I would like to uh, thank IEEE Signal Processing Society, Gujarat chapter, for giving me this uh, opportunity to talk with you on augmented reality and virtual reality. So let's uh, dive into augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, I'm just sharing my screen here.
Or should let me know if you face any problem in sharing the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you there? Yes. So let's get started. Uh, am I audible uh, correctly? Yes, you're audible. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So welcome to the talk of uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. Okay. So let's uh, let's see today's agenda. What topics uh, we are going to cover? Okay, so I have been told that uh, my audience is uh, my audience varies from second semester students to the PG students. So I will cover some of the basics of the computer graphics as well as some of the advanced concepts. Okay, so uh, first we will learn computer graphics because to understand augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, we should know what is computer graphics and how they work. Okay, then we are going. Uh, towards the understanding of augmented reality. After that, uh, we will see the types of uh, different kind of augmented realities, and we will see uh, uh, one of the demo that how augmented reality works. And then we will see uh, what what are the challenges uh, you are going to face if you if you opt for the augmented reality. And uh, similarly, we will see what is virtual reality and how virtual reality works. And then we will see different types of virtual reality and then some of the applications of virtual uh, reality. Okay, so the first is what is computer graphics? Okay, so the computer graphics is nothing but the any picture, any object uh, or uh, any 3D model generated on, on the computer digitally. That is the computer graphics. 2D computer uh, uh, computer graphics uh, is is uh, two types of uh, different computer graphics. The first one is 2D computer graphics, and uh, second one is 3D computer graphics. Okay, so what is 2D computer graphics? 2D computer graphics is computer based generation of digital images, uh, which are mostly uh, two dimensional models. Uh, meaning, uh, if we see mathematically, then uh, it will represent it will represent only two axes, x axis and y axis. So that is a two D computer graphics. 
uh, any computer graphics like uh, you have you are capturing the photo on, on your phone or you have different kind of images on your uh, desktop or laptop so that is a 2d that is the examples of 2d computer graphics uh, that are uh, those are very simple computer graphics and you can also you can uh, very you can easily generate them so using different kind of software or di different kind of applications okay so uh, let's see uh, where uh, this 2d computer graphics are used 2d computer graphics are mainly used in applications that that were originally developed upon traditional printing and drawing technologies uh, such as typography, cartography, technical drawings, advertising, etc. So, in those applications, the two-dimensional image is not just a representation of a of a real world. Those representation of the real world. Okay. So, uh, when you capture the photo uh, using your phone camera, so it will uh, the photo will be stored digitally on your mobile phone. And it will uh, represent uh, it, it will represent the real world. It will capture the reality and uh, stored into your phone digitally. So that is 2D computer graphics. Okay. So let's move towards 3D. Okay. Now things getting uh, now in the, uh, this this case uh, things getting in, uh, interesting. What is 3D computer graphics? 3D computer graphics or three-dimensional computer graphics are the graphics that use a three-dimensional represented representation of geometric that is stored in the computer for the various purposes. So like in 2D computer graphics, we are using two axes, uh, width and height, okay? So x-axis and y-axis, where in 3D computer graphics, we are introducing new x, which is z-axis, which, which represents uh, depth, okay? So x, y, and z, three axis and uh, the object or a 3D model represented in these three axis using these three axis are called 3D computer graphics. Uh, as I have told you, the objects in 3D computer graphics are often called 3D models. Unlike the 2D images, a model's data is contained within a graphical data file. A 3D model is a mathematical representation of any three-dimensional object in, and uh, also, also all the points on the 3D model are stored in the data file digitally. Okay. So 3D, uh, if you want to generate 2D graphics, then you can use the software like uh, Photoshop. But if you want to uh, generate 3D computer graphics, then uh, you do you you need to follow uh, some set of instruction or set of workflow uh, in three basic phases so the first one is 3d modeling it is the process of forming a computer model of an object's shape so what what do you do in three, uh, 3d modeling you just generate the shape of the object okay then the uh, second one is layout and animation the placement and the movement of object that you have generated, that is called layout and animation. And the third one is 3D rendering. The computer calculates uh, uh, based on the light placement, surface type, and the other qualities and generate rasterized image, the final image of that uh, 3D model, which is called 3D rendering. So if you want to generate 3D computer graphics, then you have to follow these three steps. Okay, so let's see what operation, what basic operation uh, in uh, 2D and 3D computer graphics we can do. Uh, the first one is translation. Uh, it is very simple operation where, where uh, in translation you can move a 2D or 3D object from one place to another on your screen. So uh, for example, if uh, one image or uh, one cube is uh, there on your screen and you are moving that object from one place to another like if we, if if i speak math, math, mathematically then if you move uh, that object from one location like one uh, from one coordinate to another coordinate right so that is called translation 
uh, you can uh, you can do translation on both the 2D and 3D computer graphics. Okay. Uh, the second one is rotation. In rotation operation, the object is rotated. Uh, yeah, it can be uh, it it can be with respect to any of the two or three axes. Like uh, if you rotate the, if for example, uh, if I take example of an earth, right? So earth is a sphere in a three D space. So it is rotating on uh, with respect to its y axis. So that is how you do rotation. Rotation is also applied on two D as well as three D computer graphics. And the third one is scaling. In scaling, where you can uh, increase the size of uh, 2D or 3D object, or you can uh, scale down the size, or you can minimize the 3D object. So there is a two sub operation in scaling, scale up and scale down. So these are the key operations of 2D and 3D computer graphics. So in whichever uh, field you go, whether you go into uh, 2D or 3D computer graphics, uh, whether you opt for uh, any uh, uh, game development or augmented reality development, virtual reality development, you uh, have to keep in mind that these are the three basic operations and you have to uh, do this operation while you develop the project. So uh, these are the key operations. Okay, so if you want to generate uh, 2D computer graphics, then you have, uh, I have given the example, you can use Sketch or Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw or the simplest example is MS Paint. Uh, if you want to generate uh, 3D computer graphics, then Unity is the best example where you can develop virtual reality and augmented reality uh, projects very easily and you can run it uh, on different platforms like Android, iOS, uh, on a web or on a desktop or on a Mac. Blender is also a good example. Uh, and the very famous one is uh, 3ds Max. So using all of this uh, software, you can generate 3D computer graphics very easily. Okay, so after the basic understanding of the computer graphics, let's move towards augmented reality. Okay, so what is augmented reality? So if I, uh, if I put it in a sim simpler word, uh, sim simple word, uh, you can say that uh, the combination of computer graphics with the real world or a, a transformation or manipulation of computer graphics with the interaction of real world that is called augmented reality. So, uh, if I give you the example, if, uh, many of you have played a Pokemon Go game, right? So, you just roam around the city, you catch the Pokemon using your mobile devices. Uh, when you hold your mobile device in front of you, you will see the Pokemon is standing uh, in front of you and you catch, catch them. So, that is example of one of the example of augmented rea reality and one of the type of augmented reality that we are going to see in the future. Uh, so, uh, if I go technically, then uh, the definition will be a combination of real scene viewed by a user and a virtual scene generated by a computer that augments the real scene with, the, with some additional information that is called augmented reality. Okay, so uh, now we will see the history of augmented reality. The history dates back to 1968. Uh, uh, you will find that uh, you will ha you have heard the, this term augmented reality relatively new, but it dates back to 1968 because in 1968, Ivan Sutherland, uh, the professor from Harvard, and also a computer scientist created the first head mounted display called Sword of Democles. So the first AR head mounted display was invented in 1968. It is also the VR head mounted display 
1968, the difference between AR and VR is not that much. Okay, so uh, that is AR VR head mounted display and it was uh, developed by Ivan Sutherland. Then after 1974, uh, the Ma Myron Kruger, a computer researcher and artist, built a laboratory at the Uni University of Connecticut of, uh, called Video Place. Uh, that was the entirely dedicated to artificial reality. Uh, like uh, that, that, that was working like uh, there are surrounding walls. When, when, a, when a person, person goes in, uh, the, the projection is done on all of the wall and uh, uh, person can view all the 360 degree uh, video or images. After that, uh, in uh, 80s and 90s, augmented uh, reality transitioned out of the lab and uh, into various industries and uh, business applications. Okay, so now in 1990, uh, one important event was uh, happened. In 1990, Tom Cordell, a Boeing researcher, coined the term augmented reality. So from 1990, the technology is called augmented reality. And after so much evolution, uh, like uh, uh, after 2000, the technologies picked up and uh, reached to the normal consumer. Like in 2000, uh, Hiro Kazu Kato developed open source software library called AR Toolkit. This package, uh, this library uh, helps the other developers build augmented reality software programs. The library uses video tracking to overlay virtual graphics on top of the real world. So slowly, slowly, many li other libraries and SDKs are available to the developers and uh, developers have started to develop the different kind of application in augmented reality. Okay. And after in 2014, Google unveiled Google Glass devices, a pair of augmented reality glasses that user could wear to immerse for immersive uh, experiences. And after in 2016, Microsoft starts shipping its version of wearable AR technology called HoloLens. And the headset runs on Windows 10 and uh, essentially a wearable computer. It also allows users to scan their surroundings and create their own augmented reality experience. So you can see that uh, how augmented reality has been evolved till now. And uh, also in 2016, Pokemon Go brought uh, augmented reality to the masses and changed the way average consumers thought about the emerging technology. So the augmented reality has gone through a very long evolution and uh, it's going uh, and its future is very bright. Uh, as we become increasing, in, increasingly dependent on our mobile devices, the adoption of augmented reality technology will begin to rise. AR software uh, advances will be the way forward as the overwhelming majority of the consumer have a smartphone and already take it uh, anywhere with them and making it a convenient medium to bring AR to nearly every consumer. Now the advancement of internet also played major role in evolution of the augmented reality. Now, uh, after 2015 or 2016, the geo internet is very uh, is uh, is available very cheaply. So uh, everybody has a mobile devices and everybody is using internet. So the the future of augmented reality is very bright. So let's see the types of augmented reality. So basically there are five types of augmented reality. The first one is marker-based augmented reality. Second one is human-based augmented reality. Third one is landscape-based. Fourth one is object-based. And fifth one is location-based. Now let's see uh, each example one by one. Okay, the first one is marker-based augmented reality. So how that works? 
basically in marker based augmented reality uh, one printed image is needed uh, which is called marker or a image target in that our computer or a mobile devices will scan and track that image and calculates its uh, location in real world and according to that location it will overlap a 3d object or a computer graphics over it and when you move the, that uh, um, image target or a marker in the real world it will manipulate 3d graphics accordingly so in that you need a physical marker if we uh, if i show you the example then it looks like this so the marker is shown on the mobile device or you can have you can get them printed as well and when you scan with the another mobile it will uh, overlap the 3d model over it and when you rotate uh, and uh, move your uh, marker the object will move and uh, rotate accordingly so that is the example of marker based augmented reality next is human based uh, augmented reality now what happens in marker based augmented reality every time you need a printed marker or some marker or images but if you want to augment a 3d object over your body then what happens like so the the algorithms and certain cameras uh, became available which tracks your body organs in a 3d physical space so you can overlap uh, 3d models over your body so that is called human based augmented reality so this is the one of the software that we have developed at hash media which is called virtual mirror where uh, the clothing are augmented over the user's body using human based augmented reality experience here you can see that the user is standing in front of the screen and selecting different kind of uh, clothing using hand gestures so whenever a uh, user selects uh, the clothing it will be overlapped or augmented over his body here a uh, different kind of uh, clothing categories are also available so you can see that uh, the clothing is overlapped on the user's body and how users move like uh, uh, he can rotate also then that clothes will also rotate like that so this is the example of uh, human based uh, augmented reality and also clothes will also uh, acts or uh, uh, manipulated when uh, users uh, also move his limbs so it will look very real also user can click the photograph uh, of him and uh, share it on a social media directly from the software okay so that was the human based uh, now let's see the landscape based augmented reality in landscape based augmented reality uh, the 3d object is overlapped on the landscape or a floor or a wall around you so basically what it does uh, the mobile devices and the application will track the flat surface around you like uh, if you point uh, the mobile device in front of you then it will detect the flat surface in front of you and it will overlap 3d objects over it so best example of that is pokemon go so when you hold the camera phone camera uh, the uh, you will see that pokemon is standing in front of you right so that is the example of landscape based augmented reality i'll show you the uh, example which we have built so this is the example of uh, landscape based augmented reality where you can see that people are standing 
and uh, computer graphics are overlapped on the surface around them. It is the scene of an Antarctica. Where different kind of animals uh, will come around you and roam around you like that. So this was the example of landscape based augmented reality. The next one is object based augmented reality. And that what happens, uh, the device or application will detect the objects around you. So if you like, uh, if I give you the example, uh, if I pointed uh, at a computer charger or a mobile charger. So it will detect the, that this is the mobile charger or computer charger and it will display the information of it. So that is the object based augmented reality. So it detects the objects and overlaps that uh, overlaps the information over that object. Let me show you the example. So here is the toy bike uh, and when you point your uh, mobile camera up, it will show you the different parts of that bike and uh, the graphics will be overlapped on the actual uh, physical part of that bike. So this was the object based augmented reality and the last one is location based augmented reality. In that one, what uh, the application does, it will track your location and based on your location, uh, like it will track your location using GPS on your phone and based on that location, it will show you the computer graphics around you. For example, uh, the Pokemon Go. Now Pokemon Go is the best example because it is a combination of landscape based augmented reality and location based augmented reality. It uses both the augmented reality. It uses landscape based augmented reality to um, to make Pokemon stand in front of you on the surface and it uses location based augmented reality uh, to uh, de uh, to detect your location and based on uh, your location it shows the Pokemon uh, on in uh, on your uh, mobile screen. So if uh, if you want to see the computer graphics or if you want to get uh, go to catch the Pokemon, you have to move to certain location in the map and then and then only you can see that Pokemon and catch the Pokemon. So this is how location based augmented reality works. Uh, let me show you the example. So I have given you the, the example of Pokemon Go. But uh, here is the example of Google Maps. So how Google Maps uh, uses augmented reality experience uh, in their application. So Google Map will show you uh, the shops around you in augmented reality experiences based on uh, tracking of your location using the GPS on your mobile phone. So that is location based augmented reality. So now as we have seen what and how about augmented reality, now let's see what are the challenges of the augmented reality field. Because if you are going to, uh, uh, if you are going to this field, then you should know that what are the challenges you are going to face. Okay, so the first one is lack of proven business models. One of the weirdest things about augmented reality is that despite experiencing 
broad adoption and mass public acceptance it is not doing all that well business wise let me explain uh, the industry is doing fine but there is a steady flow of uh, investment in the augmented reality app market and the general background is more than positive however all these investment are yet to pay off big time because uh, investor are investing in the startups or any app, other application in a uh, whether in a game but their investment the return on their investment is yet pending uh, ar startups are popping up like mushrooms after the rain with more and more outlandish concepts at hand and many big companies are trying out various uh, AR related solution, but there is one thing that should be noted. All these solutions are integrated into the business model that can be effective with or without an AR solution. So what's happening like uh, <clears throat> businesses are putting AR into their app or a game, even though that is not needed. So uh, it's like uh, additional tool or additional feature but if that feature is not then then you can definitely use that app without any issue so businesses are not solving actual issue using augmented reality second one is uh, security and privacy issue now the privacy and security also pose significant challenge that the AR industry is facing, okay, due to inconsistency in augmented reality programming, oversight and negligence, there is a legitimate chance of getting into trouble without uh, without meaning to do so, okay. So, the, uh, if I give you the example that uh, I have shown you the virtual mirror, right, uh, using human-based augmented reality technology that. Uh, uh, person is person can uh, stand before the screen and uh, he or she can try uh, different clothes okay now there there is a security issue here okay so if someone hacks my application okay but instead of overlaying the cloth on your body someone may overlay another nude body and spread to damage your reputation or blackmail then that is a security issue also, AR can be used to hijack accounts via surveillance and mining data output by slightly manipulating and overlaying AR content. Meaning that, uh, let's see the Pokemon Go game, right? Wherever you go to catch the Pokemon, you go to different location, your GPS is continuously tracking you. So if, if someone gets into that data, then they can see wherever you are going, whenever you are going. So it will pose you security or a privacy issue to you. So right now, uh, the problem is lack of awareness about this problem. People don't understand how sensitive the subject is. And the other part of the problem is the reluctance of the developers to take action before there is any heat on the corner. So developers are also uh, not very, very well aware what their application might uh, uh, create uh, any security or a privacy issue to the user. So this is very important challenges in the field of aug augmented reality, security and privacy issue. The third one is the possibility of a physical harm. Okay. So while long-term effects of uh, using augmented reality are much better documented than the ones of virtual reality, there is a still a significant possibility of harming yourself and surroundings due to the nature of the application and lack of attention. Okay, so for example, uh, uh, many of you have remembered the news about people hurting themselves while playing the Pokemon Go, right? So they are not aware of their surroundings while catching the Pokemon. So many uh, accidents happens, like uh, so someone uh, hit by a car while catching the Pokemon, right? So 
it is just the tip of an iceberg. Okay, so that is also a significant challenge, the possibility of physical harm. Okay, the fourth one is poor quality of content and use cases. While an AR technology is rapidly developing and gradually expanding its scope, the problem with its use cases and the content remains the same. It is the currently leading the top of unsolved problems in augmented reality in terms of being threatening to derail an industry. As I've told you, already told you that uh, many, uh, many applications are throwing uh, AR functionality uh, uh, in them. Like uh, it should be solving the issue and uh, providing the proper good quality of content. It's not uh, just that uh, my app is AR ready so I can uh, I can release it into the market and people are going to use use that uh, feature. It's not like that. Right now many of the apps which are available AR ready apps which are available it's not solving the issue actual solving the issue. Those issues uh, they are trying to solve which can be solved without an AR also. So right now no proper uh, app is available with uh, great quality of content and use cases. Now the next is public acceptance and retention. While augmented reality seems to be a relatively popular topic in the media, uh, like uh, everyone is doing AR right now, like uh, uh, every colleges, universities are uh, uh, encouraging their students to do AR, VR, but, <coughs> but right now, its overall public reception is for the lack of a better word because it's just a fancy word not actually developers are developing any worthy content or anything if you go to the uh, any uh, merchant with the ar ready app then they, they are not ready to understand what is the technology and how technology works so society is right now not accepting this technology as much like awareness is going on slowly slowly people are uh, started using it but it's a very small chunk so it will take some time for the public acceptance and retention uh, if if you have experienced the same with you uh, then uh, uh, if you have come across some of the apps uh, in ar then you you download that app you use it for one or two times and then you drop it. You don't use it anymore in a day to day basis, uh, day to daily basis of your life, right? So retention is very also less retention uh, and the public acceptance is also not that good right now. But these are the challenges uh, which will be uh, overcome by the industry uh, in the near future because the evolution of technology is going uh, up rapidly. So these challenges uh, will be gone in the near future. Okay, so if you are a developer and want to develop the augmented reality uh, by yourself, then there is a famous three SDKs which are available right now. The first one is Vuforia. If you are a student and want to develop an application for yourself, then there is a, a student, uh, there is a no fees. Uh, and if you want to develop for your business, then you have to buy a license from Vuforia. It's a very good library and supports across Android, iOS, and the uh, uh, Unity software. Right. The next one is from AR Core, which is from Google. It's a open source library and you can use it to develop Android and iOS apps. The third one is ARKit. ARKit is from Apple and you can use to develop uh, basically the iOS application, uh, augmented reality applications. So these are the three very famous SDKs which, which is right now available to develop augmented reality applications it's a very well documented SDK, so you will get the proper help if you start developing the applications. And it's very easy to learn this uh, three SDK. And uh, all of all of this SDK, you can use it with the Unity. 
and uh, Unity software, which is a 3D software where you can take a different build uh, for the different platform while writing the only code, uh, the, while writing the code only uh, one time. Okay. Okay, so let's see uh, one of the demo of the augmented reality. Okay, I'll share my... Mobile screen with you. I hope it is visible. So this is the human based uh, augmented reality application. All of you have experienced this. This is a Snapchat filter. Like uh, the uh, Application is tracking my uh, face features like nose, uh, different part of my face. And uh, based on that, it will overlap the 3D computer graphics over my face. So this is the example. This is the basic example. If you, uh, if you <coughs> import the AR core SDK into the Unity, then this is the basic example already given into that SDK so you can directly run and uh, play with it uh, on your phone. Okay, so let's move towards the virtual reality. Okay, so what is virtual reality? The term virtual reality refers to the technologies that generate realistic sounds or images or animation with the help of computer graphics. So. Okay, so while in augmented reality, you are interacting with the real world, the graphics are interacting with the real world, while in virtual reality, there is no interaction. You completely immerse yourself into the virtually generated content, like animation, images, sound, or 3D graphics. Okay, so like uh, every one of you have played the games like PUBG, GTA, Counter-Strike, as the example of virtual reality. There is a no human uh, uh, real world, uh, real physical world interaction with the computer graphics. It's completely cut off. Only uh, computers, mobile phone generates the graphics by their own without any interaction from real world. So that is called virtual reality. Okay, so the history of virtual reality. History of virtual reality also uh, long. Uh, the first VR concept was introduced in 1935. Okay, so and after that, it go it went through so much changes and evolution. The important uh, events were when the Oculus Rift was, uh, was developed. Oculus Rift uh, headset was developed in 2010, where actually immersive virtual reality started from 2010 then uh, google created cardboard vr headset in 2015 so it is a very cheap uh, vr headset and available to any of you in just 250 or 300 bucks so that changes the vr vr uh, playground completely now anyone anyone can buy a google cardboard and put their mobile phone mobile phone in them and enjoy the virtual reality. Okay, so these are the just example of VR headset which are available right now. The first one is VR box and the other one is Samsung Gear VR. VR box is based on Google Cardboard and is very cheap. Thus, while the Samsung Gear VR is little bit costly. Okay, so types of virtual reality. The first type is desktop or mobile virtual reality. Uh, the, oh, I already given you the example like Counter-Strike or GTA, which the games you are uh, playing on your desktop or mobile devices are generating computer graphics for you. So that, that are example of desktop or mobile virtual reality, okay? The second one is telepresence uh, virtual reality. So if you remember that that Narendra Modi has uh, 
conducted virtual rally, 3D hologram rally in back in 2014, 2013, 2014. So uh, hologram of Narendra Modi will stand in front of you and uh, uh, and uh, it speaks to you like in a virtual rally like that. So that is called telepresence virtual reality where uh, any person or a user can communicate with them, uh, any other user or users using virtual reality, then it is called telepresence virtual reality. Third one is immersive virtual reality. Now immersive virtual reality is the most interesting. Okay, so where you have to use the headset, VR headset, and when you wear the VR headset, you will be completely immersed into the virtual uh, environment and you can uh, roam through that environment. You can manipulate object into that environment. So that is called immersive virtual reality. Okay, so challenges for the VR industry. Okay, the first one is affordability. The high prices is discouraging a regular and ordinary usage. Uh, many of the headsets are very costly. Like if you go, uh, go for uh, Samsung Gear VR and uh, other headsets, then they are very costly. Oculus Rift, if you want to purchase, then it comes in 70,000 to 80,000. So that is uh, much discouraging, uh, discouraging factor if you want to go for VR. Uh, of course, cheap, cheaper headsets are available, but uh, that is not that good if you uh, experience content-rich uh, content uh, VR experience. So affordability is the uh, issue. Uh, the second one is no or very little demand from the customer side. For companies venturing into and adopting virtual reality, there is a virtually no competition in the market right now. This discourages the development of VR and AR system and its acceleration in adoption. Mostly the technology is adopted by the tech enthusiast and early adopters. It's the same as uh, AR. Right now, there is a less uh, interest in this industry, actual interest in this industry. And uh, right now, it's uh, it's without any proper uh, application which are available, which is very useful. Uh, and uh, it has a very uh, correct use case. Okay. Uh, the third thing is, uh, the third challenge is, is, uh, is technology is still unproven. Uh, not just the technology, uh, not just the content wise, but there is a low application of technology in real life with only a handful of a total user globally. There is also a handful of VR content platform and not as much of VR content is available. Okay, you, you have seen the, uh, you have heard the word of uh, metaverse. So that is uh, also VR, but it's still in its baby phase, child phase. So still the technology is not proven. So that is also one of the barriers. Okay. The fourth one is customers lacking options. Low adoption means there are not many headset of VR systems out there. And this is this then limits the con consu consumer options, especially in the high end devices category. As I've told you, if you go, if you want to go to high end devices, then there is a less option available. Uh, and uh, if you go to the cheaper, uh, cheaper categories, then the experience is not that rich. So we, uh, industry has to find the balance between it. And the uh, fifth one is uh, health concerns. Virtual reality is not proven to have a serious long-term health effects, but the studies containing proof for any benefits are few. The technology also requires improving for customers to stop experiencing temporary side effects such as blurred vision, nausea, headaches, headaches. So if you if you have experienced the VR using the VR headset, when you wear the VR, like many of the users can feel the nausea or a headache because your uh, your vision is completely blocked by that headset and you are completely immersed and the graphics uh, moves around you uh, in very 
very speedy. So many of the user face, uh, faces uh, the symptoms like nausea and headaches after using the VR headset uh, long time. So these are the challenges for VR industry. Okay, so available SDK for the virtual realities are uh, the Oculus, uh, Firefox reality and Google VR. These are the famous SDKs which are available. Oculus SDK, uh, you can use it to develop uh, application for the Oculus headset only. While the Firefox reality SDK, you can use it to develop the web VR experience. If you want to run your virtual reality experience in the web browser, then you have to use Firefox reality. And uh, if you want to use, if you want to create the application for uh, Google Cardboard uh, headset or like that, then you can use Google VR SDK for that. And all of these SDK are very simple and easy to understand with the well documented, well, with well documentation. Okay, so let's see one of the uh, demo for the VR. So here is the example of small game, a first person controller game, where you can see that two stereoscopic view are given for the VR headset. And when you wear the VR headset, you will find that you are immersed into that into this game. Okay, so this is the basic demo of VR. Okay. So now, right now, the three uh, coined words are available uh, in the market, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. So now, what is the difference? Uh, we have seen the virtual reality, and we, we have also seen the augmented reality. Okay, so what is the difference? Uh, if, if I, uh, let's see that in uh, summary, like if I go for virtual reality, then there will be fully artificial env environment generated by the computer devices or mobile devices, and you will be fully immersed into that virtual environment. Okay, so uh, where in augmented reality, virtual objects overlaid or overlapped on real world environment, and then the real world enhance, you will see the real world enhance with that digital objects. So. Uh, as the situation changes in the real world, the ob the digital object objects are going to change uh, are going to also change. So that is called augmented reality. And the third one is mixed reality. Now mixed reality combines both virtual environment and real world, and uh, interact with the both the real world and the virtual environment. Like you, you can you can use your hand to generate the virtual world in uh, real uh, real world. Like if if I given you the example of uh, Hololens headset, Microsoft Hololens, then that that is the best example of mixed reality, where you can uh, use use your hands to create the uh, <clears throat> digital objects or uh, 3D models into the real world. So. <clears throat> These are the three uh, coined words right now in the market, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. So from now on, please don't get confused between AR and VR or MR when people ask you about this, okay? Okay, so let's see the market size right now. Okay, so the <clears throat> augmented reality and virtual reality market share is expected to increase by 125 billion dollar from 2020 to 2024 so and the market's growth momentum will accelerate to will accelerate at a 35 percent at the compound annual growth rate so the opportunity in this market is very much uh, if you are a, still a student and learning this thing then uh, you have a great opportunity in the future. You have a great uh, 
future in this technology, in any of this technology, or whether it is AR or VR, because it is going upwards only from now on. Because with the accessible internet and very cheaper internet and with the uh, a cheaper hardware for AR and VR available in the market, the market will grow. So you have a great opportunity. So please learn AR or VR and you will find a greater opportunity in the future. This augmented reality and virtual reality market research report provides valuable insight on the post COVID-19 impact on the market, which will help companies evaluate their business approaches. So as I am telling you that uh, the market is uh, about to grow uh, at a very fast pace. So that uh, also the companies which are right now in the market will also figure that out and uh, started creating uh, new content and uh, new use cases for you. So ultimately all of the factors related to this market will grow. Right now the major players like uh, Al Alphabet or Google, uh, Facebook or Meta, Meta or HP, HTC, Magic Leap, Microsoft, Samsung, like major players are investing a huge chunk of money in this market. And 37% of the market growth will originate from Asia Pacific, which consists uh, China, Japan, and India. And uh, rising investment in AR and VR technologies to expand their application in different fields will felicitate the augmented reality and virtual reality market growth in Asia Pacific over the forecast period. So you have a great opportunity. Please explore this uh, both uh, fields and uh, it's, it's a huge market. Uh, you will not regret it. Thank you very much. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, that's just from me. And uh, if you want uh, any guidance regarding this two of the fields, then you are, you are, uh, you are welcome to contact me at this uh, phone number or email. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if you, any of you have any question, then uh, I can answer that. Chef, uh, that was a really, really wonderful talk that the students who pursue their careers with this particular thing, they have got a good insight about the business of VR, VR, and VR. So, if anyone is having any doubt, then we'll ask about any open to all of you. Because there was one specific doubt by one of the uh, he wanted some more insight into the marker based uh, AI. Okay, okay. So I will explain it again. Uh, what is marker based AI? Okay. So basically, you have to create one physical image, like uh, of your photo or of any uh, other uh, image, like you have clicked any of the photos with some patterns over it or with uh, some object over it and you print that photo like like it's a qr code or a uh, barcode like that so every, everyone knows qr code it is printed on uh, on the on or barcode in any of the product physically so it's the same but it it, it can contain any image so when uh, your application sees that image using the phone's camera, it will detect its, pos its position or a location in the real world. And based on those coordinates of that uh, image or a marker, it will overlap 3D object over it on your screen. So it will look like that the 3D object is sitting or overlapped over that image. 
but for marker based ar you will need marker so that is some limitation because you can't uh, use marker everywhere for example if i give you uh, the object based is how how better than marker based in object based ar you are just scanning the object you point the phone at some object and it will detect automatically by seeing that object that what is that object and overlap any uh, graphics over that object it doesn't need any images of that object it directly uh, detects that object i hope uh, it is clear now Uh, uh, thank you. Then there is one more is what is the future of AR and VR? Uh, as I explained, the future of AR and VR is great. Uh, the thing uh, with uh, uh, metaverse is coming, like a majority of the multinational MNCs like Microsoft, Facebook, uh, even in India, Mahindra is started to create their own metaverse. So. Metaverse is next thing. Now, ev everything like a concert, like a, a virtual match for uh, any sports will happen in Metaverse. So in future, uh, everything will happen either in uh, using AR or VR. Uh, I don't know, many of you have seen that, uh, that, uh, that movie, Ready Player One or something like that of Steven Spielberg where the metaverse is created and everything is happened in the metaverse. If you want to uh, visit some place, you can visit that place into that metaverse. So the future is great and uh, opportunity for the uh, developers are also great. So if you want to explore that field right now, and if you are a student, then it's the best time to explore that. So do it. Or uh, one last question is how AR VR could be useful in biomedical application. Yes, uh, so biomedical, uh, we have uh, developed one application uh, using augmented reality uh, for the biomedical, uh, where uh, where one ventilator is there, right? So in in the pandemic era, when a ventilator malfunctions, then that is a huge problem because there there are already scarcity of the ventilators so and uh, the repairman of the ventilator can't go everywhere because uh, some uh, covid protocol should also be followed and if it is a minor problem then uh, then there is a, then it can be solved by just a regular uh, instruction so what we have developed that uh, any user can point their phone, like uh, any uh, any person in the hospital, like can point uh, the phone over to the ventilator, and it will give you the regular check uh, uh, instruction that you should follow. That when you follow it, it will automatically detect the problem. That what is the problem with ventilator? If it's a huge problem, then you have to call the repairman. Otherwise, it will be uh, solved by the applications only. So that is one of the use case in biomedical applications. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Harshit. So I'll um, now call Hootri to take over. Um, Hootri, please. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for the immensely informative and knowledgeable session. Um, I would like to invite Mr. Uh, Mayuresh Kulkarni, sir, branch counselor of uh, Silver University IEEE student branch to present the vote of thanks. Am I audible to you all? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Good morning to one and all present over here. I am Mayuresh Kulkarni, branch counselor, Silver Oak University IEEE student branch. Would like to thank each and every one of you for being with us today on behalf of IEEE Signal Processing Society, Ujjat section, and IEEE Silver Oak University student branch. Thank you so much, Mr. Harshit Lalpura, sir, for this wonderful talk on augmented reality and virtual reality it was an amazing and enlightening session also Hello. i would like to thank also i would like to thank dr chirag pawala sir vice chair ieee gujarat section 
and chair IEEE Signal Processing Society Chapter, Gujarat Section. Dr. Arpan Desai, Technical Activity Chair and IEEE Signal Processing Society, Gujarat Section. And Dr. Chintan Varnargar, sir, Technical Activity Vice Chair for their continuous guidance. I would extend my gratitude to Dr. Satvik Khara, sir, Vice Chair, Student Activity Committee and Founder of IEEE Silver Oak University Student Branch and Signal Processing Society Student Branch Chapter for always being supportive towards such initiatives. Also, I would like to thank all the student branch, uh, all the student members for a hassle-free execution and a cordial coordination. At the end, a big round of thanks to all the participants present in today's session. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So before before we um, uh, depart, we can have a group photo, and uh, we can also deliver the money. On behalf of IEEE SPS, GS, and IEEE Silver Oak uh, University branch, I would like to for a moment to do alpha uh, on real again was Can we have a group photo? Meanwhile, uh, you share the screen for the moment. Sure, sir. We are requested, all of you requested to turn on the camera. So you can have a group photo there. So please turn on your camera so you can have the photo. Also. Oh, thank you. Oh, three, I guess uh, Harshit, sir, because we had some meetings. So I think I'll share the moment of them over the email, right? Sorry, sir. Harshit sir has to leave because um, I think he had some meeting. So I'll be delivering the memento to him over the email ID. So we can, we can close the meeting for now. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you very much to all of you uh, present over here. Thank you, sir. Thank you.